All right, brothers, good morning and welcome to another Man Up Monday. We're so happy to have you guys come and join us here. Um, I can't, there's just not a better way to kick off the week than getting on here as a group of men and diving into the word. And I know uh, our speaker this morning is going to bring it. Um, always love hearing him teach, especially when he makes a trip down to uh, Liberty, comes and preaches at our church here in, in Lula, Georgia. Um, just a very, very dear brother. Um, not going to dive into a lot of announcements, guys. You know where to go and get all of our information. Um, MOVministries.org, our website. Um, or you're always welcome to head over to our band community, and we're posting information there constantly. I uh, just want to use this time this morning to get into the Word and have some discussion and uh, start our Mondays off right. So I'm going to pray us in, and then my brother Travis Watson is going to dive in here and bring the Word this morning. So if you will, pray with me. I have a Father, Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of men all over this country, Father. I just ask that you uh, be with each man who's here on the screen this morning and any of those who are going to tune in later to the playback, Father. We know we're all dealing with stuff. We're all going through different walks. I just ask that you uh, speak to each of us in our situations. Allow this word to uh, guide us, direct us, allow us to be better men. It's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those kind words, Jordan. Uh, it was a blessing this last week to record the podcast with him. And uh, last last Thursday that went out. And uh, man, it's always it's always so enjoyable being with with guys you love, whether it's our podcast team, you brothers on here through Men of Valor. Um, and it's just it's so easy always to to talk and and to share life and and to laugh and share stories and see what God's doing, be encouraged by that. I just love it. I love it. Uh, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different this morning uh, that will hopefully uh, encourage you, but also challenge us as men. It's not something that gets talked about a lot with men. It's been on my mind, and typically when, when we're teaching or doing devotionals about stuff, uh, it's usually where God's been having us walk, right? It's It's through things that we've been reading and studying and things of that nature, and I've been spending, oh gosh, the better part of six months now, I guess, just really looking at various spiritual disciplines and what those look like played out in my life. Uh, certainly, um, you know, one of one of our themes that my son and I share here in our home that we talk about all the time is is discipline till death. And that that notion, and you've probably heard me say that before, but it's that notion that you never arrive. You're always at uh at the the stage of of work and process and development and growth and uh there's always an area that needs improvement right and so it's just an area i've been walking in and uh specifically this morning we're going to be talking about the area of serving one another through listening serving through listening and Listening is, it's one of those funny things, right? I, my son got up this morning to get to the gym uh, bright and early. He's 16 and a typical 16 year old kid takes forever to wake up and get going. You know, he's groggy cobwebs and just trying to shake it off. And as always, you can't tell a teenager what to do about anything, right? It's summertime earlier, uh, a couple months back, 9,000 degrees and humid as all get out here in the South. And he'll want to walk out of the house wearing, you know, sweatpants and a sweatshirt. But come uh, winter creeping in on us this morning, it's 43 degrees out. And uh, I'm like, all right, you, you're going to get some coffee, you going to get anything, going to get ready. No, nah, I had a little drink of water. I'm ready. Well, we walk out of the house and the air just, I'm like, man, this feels good, right? I'm feeling refreshed. I got my, my nice men of valor discipline sweatshirt on and I'm comfortable. Got a hat on my head, keep my heat in. And we get in the car to go drop him off at the gym about 30 minutes ago or whatever. And he's just quick, turn the heat on, turn the heat on. I'm like, you can put the blower on all you want, Bo. Go ahead, see what happens. <laughs> and he turns that on and just whoosh, cold air blowing, right? And he shuts it off right away. And we get out of the driveway. And lucky for him, the gym for us is only about five minutes away. So we're we're going down the room or down the road rather. And he's just kind of, you know, shaking and being real quiet and everything. So I decided to just unroll his window and power lock him out so he could get that that breeze going a little bit more for him and as soon as it went down he, what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> and uh i said jack i really just want to know what you're feeling right now i want to know what's going on in your heart 
I want you to open up and just talk to dad for a moment. <laughs> and he let me know what he was feeling. It wasn't the warmest, man, you're the greatest dad in the world kind of thing. So I rolled it back up and we get to the gym and uh, he's like, you're not going to let me out. You're not going to let me out. I'm going to stay in the car until they open the doors because they open right at five. So uh, we're there and he's like, don't pull up to the doors. I don't want people not to think, you know, I don't have my own car. Let me get out over here on the side. And he's just, you know, being a kid, right? Being a young man. And uh, I love him for it. I love him for it. And he got out of the car, went on in. And I, I wasn't planning on any of that as a way of tying into this morning even. But it just struck me how there's so much that we process, even as young men, and there's such an art involved at communicating and truly listening to one another. Now, I can, I can make a judgment call on my son a lot easier than I can on most people because I know him. Uh, I've been around him. I spent a lot of time with him. And so I can pretty much guess what his reactions to things are going to be, what he's going to say. Uh, where he's going to go in a conversation. And unfortunately, if I'm not really intentional, I'll do a horrible job at listening to him. Horrible job, because I already know a lot of where he's going to go on a journey. And uh, now you back that up, and his girlfriend that he likes a lot, uh, they kind of had a little separation this past weekend, and it crushed his heart crushed his heart and I could tell he didn't want to talk and so we went out back the beautiful crisp cold air and uh he turned the fire pit on about 11 o'clock on Saturday night and we sat out there for about an hour and most of the time we just sat side by side and I kept prompting and looking for those things to get him to start opening up and talking and ultimately he did. We had a great conversation towards the end of the night. And uh, when we got up to leave, he said this to me. He said, Dad, that really meant a lot to me. Thanks. So why do I bring this up? I, well, I bring it up because scripture teaches us that one of the most beautiful ways we can serve one another is by listening to each other. And quite honestly, we're not very good at it, man. Uh, and, and in full transparency, it's an area I can really suck in. And it, what makes that difficult for me is I love listening to people. I love conversation. Uh, people ask me all the time, what would bring you the most joy? You give me a pot of coffee and a, a lineup of men for eight hours, eight different men, <laughs> one an hour, and let me sit somewhere and just have dialogue. Uh, I love it, man. That, that just gives me life. But where I struggle is shutting up long enough to truly listen to the brother across from me. I've been talking with several guys lately, even about the book of James. James is one of those wonderful books that Martin Luther didn't care too much for. And a lot of us, if you've read it, you can understand why <laughs> Martin Luther wasn't even sure it should be considered part of the sacred text. Uh, he, he really didn't like a lot of James's uh, prodding and poking, especially when it came to, to doing uh, and living out uh, the Christian life. But, but James says something, one of the most popular verses in the book, and one I'm sure you've all heard, but we're going to use it as a jumping off point. James chapter 1, the very beginning of 19, he says this, Understanding this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen and slow to speak. Quick to listen and slow to speak. Now that word quick, uh, it's a Greek word. Again, I'm not a scholar. I tell you guys this all the time. I, I got to look up these words. It, it almost sounds like tacos. So uh, it's takus. So if you, you said it with a any kind of an accent, depending on where you're from, people will be thinking you're talking about tacos. So you got to be careful when you get into other languages. But this word takus, it, it literally means uh, like express with uh, haste uh, to do something rapidly, very swiftly. Uh, it's the same word that John uses in the book of Revelation at the very end of the Bible when he says, talking about Jesus, behold, I come quickly. James is teaching us here that our default mode, something that we should be very uh, just motivated, very driven to do instantly, 
is listen. And this is pretty profound coming from James. You know, in this book, being the half-brother of Jesus, he, he refers to Jesus as Lord 14 different times. And I was struck by how, uh, how ironic it is that James has had such an encounter, such a transformation with his brother that uh, he begins to see him as not just his brother, but as who he also fully was, which is God, to the point that he gets away from calling him Jesus and uh, gets into the title of lordship. It's so important that we understand that concept because we'll never be good at listening as long as we're Lord. As long as we're the ones that are in control of our life, as long as we're the ones that are pulling the strings on circumstances and details around us, we'll, we'll really flip this text and we'll, we'll do the opposite as men. We'll be uh, quick to speak and slow to listen. And as I mentioned before, that can be my default mode. When I'm meeting with someone, uh, I'm not thinking initially a lot of times as I'm going to enter into the, the discipline of the service of, of listening to someone. And, and that's, that's a shame on me for that. That's, that's a, uh, a tragic statement about my life because we're encouraged, we're told, we're taught. This is something that we should be. We should be eager to listen to someone else because when we can truly listen, what we're going to see here in some other verses, when we can truly practice this discipline, we're really entering into an act of service to other people. But in my head, when I'm meeting with someone, even this morning, you may be doing this while you're hearing me talk. I'm, I'm already processing where this is going. I'm already thinking what my response is going to be. I'm already preparing my defense. I'm already preparing my rebuttal. I'm already preparing uh, perhaps an illustration or a story where I can relate or where I can do one up more than you or where I can enter into the conversation and all of a sudden have a role or have a part to play. And in my mind, my I'm constantly processing and thinking. And when you're doing that, you're not listening to what the other person is truly saying to you. Uh, when I first got out of college with my criminal justice degree and moved up to New York, I was fortunate enough to get on a job that, that I love before getting called into ministry. But uh, part of that job, it was all criminal investigations, internal investigations, and uh, for retail companies. And part of that was we had to get trained and certified in the art of interrogations. And we had to go off to these trainings and schools and all this kind of stuff. And it was fascinating to learn the art of truly listening to people because it involves so much more than just processing the next thing coming up. You always did have to be thinking ahead but you always had to be listening with your eyes and with your heart. What was getting prompted inside of you? What did you know? But also, what are you seeing someone communicate to you? I've always been struck by that because I can default so easily into just what I have next. What are the next questions that I need to be asking instead of truly pausing long enough? If we backtrack to the Gospels, Mark tells us in the book of chapter 4, Verse 23 through 24, Jesus says this, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he goes on to say to them, Pay attention to what you hear, for what measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still even more will be added to you. In other words, he says, If you have the ability to listen, then you really need to listen. If you have ears to hear, then hear. Too often, we, we have that ability, but we're so quick to rush past that. And this is the principle that Jesus is teaching. When we hear the word of God, if you were at church yesterday or even this morning, you're hearing scripture and you're hearing what I pray I'm giving you is truth. When you hear that, you automatically become accountable for what you do with what you've heard. You don't get to say, well, I've, I've listened and I've heard all this, but I, I don't want to do anything about it. No. The Bible tells us we're accountable for what we hear. So we have to take care and pay attention at how we listen, what we hear. And that same principle is true when we listen to, uh, to one another talk, when we hear the words of our friends, when, when you sit down and have a conversation with someone, whether face-to-face -face or over FaceTime or through Zoom or whatever facet that might be, when you hear someone express something to you, you are now becoming accountable to them. 
and how you serve them and how you love them as you listen matters tremendously eternally because listening well is truly a service. One of the things I love about Jesus, Jesus used multiple teaching methods, but one of his favorite methods to use uh, was the rabbinical uh, teaching method of asking questions. And you see this over and over again. I don't have time to get into all the examples, but if you familiarize yourself with the Gospels, you'll see him frequently ask questions. And he's doing this because questions are meant to teach us but they're also meant to prompt conversation. They're, they're meant to get you to talk, to walk through with your words what you're processing and what's going on inside of you. And that's how you grow. Proverbs 18, 13 tells us, if someone gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. Man, I am so quick to call my teenagers on that. My teenagers at home they know this principle. They won't even let you get a word out sometimes. They'll cut you off because they want to tell you the right answer so they don't get in trouble or whatever else it might be. But I do this same thing. And so Solomon tells us wisely, if anyone gives us an answer before he even hears the heart of the other person, it's to our shame because we haven't even stopped long enough to truly hear them. He says again, Proverbs 17, 28, even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise when he closes his lips. He is deemed intelligent. Even a fool seems intelligent when they can learn this art of listening. I've, I've referred to this book, and I in no way want to come across like I'm promoting Richard Foster's book of spiritual disciplines as if it's the best thing next to the Bible. It's just an area I've walked in, and, and he has this quote uh, that has stuck with me. I want to read it to you in the area of service. He says, the first service that one owes to others in the fellowship of brotherhood and Christianity consists of listening to them. Just as love to God begins with listening to his words, so the beginning of love for the brethren is learning to listen to each other. The beginning of love for the brethren is learning to listen to each other. To listen to others well quiets and disciplines our mind so that we are also able to listen to God. And this is the struggle for us as men, right? We've got a list of 10 billion things. Even when we're meeting with someone, we have so many things that pull on our time, so many things that uh, call for our attention. And so if we feel like someone's wasting that time, if we feel like someone's not being transparent, not being honest, uh, not not valuing that time in return, we will do a horrible job at listening. i blessed to meet with a lot of different men. God will bring new men into my life all the time. There are some men I walk with and have walked with consistently, just meeting weekly and trying to practice soul care with one another. And there are times I will meet with men and they will just give me the token stuff, just keep it surfacy. Doesn't matter what questions I ask, we just stay, you know, 10 feet above the water level. And it takes all that I have, and this is where the discipline comes in, but it takes all that I have to stay in that conversation and listen, because I, I want to say, and sometimes I do, but I want to say all the time, like, would you knock the crap off and just get real for a moment? But really what people are doing when they're communicating that way is they're trying to tell us, hey, I'm not comfortable right now. Uh, I may not feel safe. I'm not even sure how to properly explain what I'm going through in my head. Uh, I'm scared to go to where I need to go conversationally with you. There's a lot of reasons why we keep it on the surface level. And really what we should be doing is coming up with good questions that say, how can I make you more comfortable to where you'll share a little bit more and a little bit more? I wrote this down in my notes. God never intended for our relationship with him and the struggles and the things we go through in this life to be private. Yes, it's a very personal relationship with God, but he never include, intended it to be private. Back to James 5.16, James tells us, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. You can't properly confess to one another if someone on the other side of that confession is not listening. Confession requires us to listen. And yes, there's a time to speak. There's a time to jump in, but there's also, and probably more frequently, a time to just 
ask a good question and sit in the silence of that, even if it's uncomfortable, and let someone else talk. A couple of questions I wrote down for us to ponder, and we're almost done this morning, but think about these questions. How are you doing at listening to other people? And this applies not just to men meeting with men, it applies to your children, applies with your spouse if you're married, applies to coworkers, uh, people you might supervise, as well as those who supervise you. How are you doing at listening? Are you, are you willing to grow in this area? Are you striving to grow in this area, in the area of, of listening as a service to each other? Are you quick to give advice? Or do you know how to ask good questions? As I said before, that invites other people to speak and to open up and to share so that you're able to listen even more. I believe this is true. We love best when we listen well. We love best when we listen well. I think Jesus modeled this so frequently and so beautifully, so many times he would have been perfectly justified to tell people, stop talking, leave me alone, now's not a good time. But no matter how tired he was, no matter how stretched thin he was, no matter how short he was on time trying to get from point to point, he always made time to listen to someone. Always made time to listen. And I believe this is true. I believe our community, not just here in the Men of Valor, not just here in the, the Zoom call, not if you're catching the playback on YouTube, uh, not just in your churches, in your men's group, not just in your cul-de-sac, in your neighborhood, in your community where you might live. Uh, I believe we're surrounded by men that want to be heard. We're surrounded by people that have burdens on their hearts that they are desperate to want to unburden to other people. But if we're not godly men that are practicing and growing in this area of listening well, and willing to listen well, we'll never foster that attitude of uh, encouraging people to share their hearts with us. And instead, we'll foster the attitude of internalization, uh, isolation, uh, being reticent. We'll, we'll cause people to just shut down. And we're that people sometimes too, right? We're those individuals that practice those same characteristics. So men, I want to leave you with this. We're going to have a few minutes. If you got questions or comments, I'd love to hear uh, any, any comments you guys might have or questions about this area of, of listening well. But remember this, we are most like Christ when we serve, right? That, that's a characteristic that Christ drives home throughout not only his ministry, but through the apostles' letters and teachings of the New Testament. We are most like him when we serve. And when we serve well, when we serve well, we are willing to be present and to listen to other people. You don't have to be a counselor. You don't have to be a therapist. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a pastor or a great theologian. You don't have to be a specialist, highly trained in the area of interacting with other people to listen well. You merely just need to be present. Be present. And in the quietness of your spirit, say, God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to ask? What, what do you want me to, to use to prompt them to share more? And then just be quiet. And sometimes that might even mean being quiet in awkwardness so that the other person will share. We love best when we listen well. I want to encourage you, James 1.19, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Let's practice that today as we live life. Love you guys, and thank you for being on the call this morning. Jordan, I'm going to turn it back over to you, brother. You had to step all over my toes of the podcast last week and turn around and do it again this morning. <laughs> Man, the toes are getting a little sore, brother. Um, absolutely amazing word. Um, and now we have the opportunity to hear what some of you guys listened and heard from Travis this morning. So, Brother Truman, what do you got to share this morning? Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to hop on here and say good morning. And uh, Travis, that's a, such a good word. And um, just uh, one of my struggles is that um, um, I'm probably at least with my bride, sometimes too good a listener or not even good enough because uh, she'll be communicating something to me 
and I'll just uh, stay silent. So I don't know if that's that I she starts talking and I get in my own head and just uh, think about responses or what I'm thinking about that. But in the end, it just comes across as dead silence. And that's not good either. So um, whether it's uh, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all, or um, she won't like what I have to say, or I don't know. But um, yeah, that's just uh, something that I struggle with um, and I have to fight against all the time because I'll just, um, I'll, I'll hear her and then I'll just uh, clamp down and um, not say anything. And uh, that's not good. So, so I need to practice um, active listening and um, hearing what she says and uh, let her know that I heard her and that I am working towards the solution or a conversation or or uh, or whatever it is. And uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to add that in there. Love you guys so much. That's can I jump in real quick, Jordan? That's really good, Truman. Thank you for that. And I think that touches on something Jeff said in the chat as well. And this is so true. We, we do want to fix things, especially we talk about our wives or other close intimate relationships. It's like, how do I get this better right away? Right. One of the best lessons uh, one of my dear friends, Philip Pigeon, taught me is that it's never your job to fix anybody, especially when you're having a conversation. And man, that just like, whew. <laughs> but I'm called to pour into men. I'm called to lead and da, 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 da. It's the Holy Spirit's job to fix people. We're just there to be a conduit, to be, to be the person that says, let's listen to God and hear what he has to say. So take that pressure off of you. If you're a man listening to this and understand you don't have to have the right answer. You don't have to fix anything. Get comfortable with uncomfortableness. And sometimes it just means sitting and listening and saying, thank you for sharing. I, I wish I had more to say, uh, but I don't. So I'm just going to sit in that. So great, great comment. Thanks, Truman. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. What a tough place for us as men to uh, choose to go to. Um, I know I struggle with it, uh, but it's it's vital in our faith. It's vital in our walk if we want to grow the way God's called us to. Anybody else? We've still got about three more minutes here. A couple of you, I was expecting them hands to go flying up. Maybe uh, those toes are a little sore. Truman, uh, I just want to add that's that's an area that I struggle with for a long time too, uh, with my bride. I'm a multitasker, uh, which is unusual for men, but it's I, I guess I've trained myself professionally that kind of thing to be able to multitask. And a lot of times, I, I'm not really good at active listening with my bride. Um, I'll be doing two or three things while I'm, I am listening. Uh, but part of my, her struggle with, with that is, am I actually listening? Um, so I get where you're coming from completely, brother. Man, quiet group this morning. Nobody else. Well, then I guess we will wrap things up this morning, guys. Um, so thankful to have you all come in here and joining us. Uh, just want to throw in the one little announcement. We do have the the gun raffle going on with Men of Valor Ministries that is going to sponsor the free marriage conference here in Lula, Georgia, that we're super excited about. We've actually got um, several of our Men of Valor men from out of state that are coming to Georgia for that event, um, which I think is just unbelievable. Super excited to see some of you guys next month. Uh, November 11th is that conference. So you've got up until that date to buy those gun raffle tickets. If you're a gun guy, I promise you there are several guns on that list that you're going to want to have your hands on if you have the opportunity. Um, I was able to pick out several of the guns myself to add to that list. Uh, and so I was picking out things that I would want to win if I were buying raffle tickets. Uh, Cause I will be buying raffle tickets at some point in time. <laughs> uh, so super excited about that. Uh, but again, just another opportunity for men of valor to give back to groups that are trying to further the kingdom that are trying to grow people and what a better way to support marriages. Um, that's we talk about it a lot. Um, but marriages are important and men leading in marriage as well is very important. So with anything else, Travis, if you want to pray us out, we'll get started this week. Sounds good. Let's do it guys. Lord, we love you. Thank you for uh, just the, just the love that you have for us. I thank you how, 
you model all the things that we try and teach and, and we try and talk about that, that we look need to look no further than you and uh, how you love people. I pray that you would help us as men. You, you know how we're wired. Uh, some of us don't like conversation at all and communicating and we can get quiet from that. And uh, that's not good either. And, and you know that. I, I just pray that you would help us as men be intentional. Help us to dig in, in in some of these areas where we're weak, where we just haven't taken the time to develop discipline and grow and and be all that you made us to be as, as sons of God. And I pray that we would just um, get better at this. And, and I almost shudder at saying this. I hate kind of teaching on these kind of things. It's like Jordan said with the podcast last week, it feels like instantly there's going to be attacks and opportunities to truly, you know, test us and see if we're going to live this out. And so as trials and struggles and challenges come, I pray that we would be submissive to the Holy Spirit in those moments, that we would listen well. And in our listening, that we would be reminded that we are serving and loving Jesus by serving and loving other people through our listening. Uh, love you again so much. Bless the men their families, their ministries this week. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. That's it, men. Love you guys. Get after it, all right?